Hello and welcome my Capricorn Collective Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus signs and cross watchers. Welcome to your timeless shadow read. I am your reader, Mark Angelo Lyons, Mal for short. They're my initials. I'm a professional witch, a professional intuitive, and the president of Drawing the Circle Productions since 1998, if you haven't heard already. <laughs> I'm the author of two different books, third one in process. First one is called Spell Ingredient, second one is called Words of Grace. Words of Grace does have a Kindle version available. So I put a link in the description box, and if you click it, you can preview it for free and see that uh, the book is primarily divided into chakra chapters. This is a chakra dense read, so you might find it helpful. Uh, the, the, the original version of Words of Grace, which was so huge, we had to seriously edit it down and make it fit on Kindle, and it is available on patreon.com slash drawing the circle in our digital shop. We've got the ebooks, we've got audios, we've got videos. The audios and videos have free previews that anybody uh, can check out at their leisure. Um, some of my subscribers get those ebooks, audios, and videos automatically as part of their subscription package, depending upon which level. But all of my subscribers get three benefits in common a daily check in when I send them an unlisted YouTube live stream link pretty much every single morning. Did it this morning, it was lovely. We chat about the day's astrological weather. We always end with some sort of spiritual practice to send us on our way, and it's the wisest way for me to start the day, considering what I have to do in this new home of mine and keep my career moving forward. It's a lot of work, but it's a lot of fun. To, uh, they also get all the extended readings, all the part twos to the part ones here on YouTube. All of my extended readings are timeless and relationship based oriented, whatever you want to call that. Uh, they also get an extensive discount when they book me for a private session. We'll talk about that at the end of the video if you want more info. I love it. You can follow for free. You can seven day free trial. You can shop in the shop. It's just the coolest thing ever. So click the link and check it out and come play Tron on Patreon with the Archangel of Lions, Mark Angela Lions. You can just call me now because I love Capricorn. I mean, I say that in every ring, particularly Capricorn. So, hi, my uh, Capricorns and cross watchers. For the new people, we're going to do a little uh, explanation before we get into the divination. Feel free to jump ahead, but if you've been following me for a while, you'll notice that the number of cards for these shadow raids has decreased rapidly over a period of time. They started out as eight card draws and seven card draws. This is a five card draw. So, if you are new, a five card draw is just one card from five different different decks, getting you clues, tips, and hints about absolutely anything, but in this case we are talking about the shadow work, the releasing, the letting go, the forgiving, the healing, the transformation, and all of that jazz. Our first deck that we will deal with is the Caroline Mace Archetype Cards. Uh, we'll get one of these for the 8th Chakra. I learned about the 8th Chakra from Caroline Mace. That's M-Y-S-S. -S. She's a PhD, author of many books, but Anatomy of the Spirit is the one that I learned about the 8th Chakra much more than I found anywhere else. And of course, uh, the Archetype Cards are based in her work on Sacred Contracts, a life-changing work. The next three chakras down, the crown, the third eye, the throat, and the heart, we will get one Daughters of the Moon Tarot, because it's the internal, the internal feminine goddess energy. Maybe you share that internal stuff with the world, maybe you don't. You have your free will on that. Throat chakra is free will. For the lower three chakras, the masculine yang dynamic, you looking at yourself from the outside like in a mirror, you from the inside possibly looking at people, places, and things that you have relationships with in the physical world. And because it is a cross-watcher reading, we often get a lot of mirroring, so it can be both. And this is the mythic tarot, one of my favorite tarot decks ever. Greek mythology, my favorite thing. That will take care of all of the chakras from eighth to root, so then we will get a whisper of Lord Ganesh from the Whispers of Lord Ganesha uh, uh, Oracle by Angela Hartfield. He is the Hindu elephant-headed god of success, prosperity, and remover of obstacles. There are three atoms in between lead and gold on the periodic table that cannot be created or destroyed, only changed, released, transformed, forgiven, alchemized is usually the word that I use, and this oracle is amazing. I love Ganesh. And we will end with our last card from the Matt Con healing mantra, because a little mantra goes a long way if you work it. 
And these are healing readings, physical, emotional, mental, spiritual, financial, relational, any kind of reading. It is a general read. So any kind of healing that is needed, of course, you do you. There is our explanation. So let's get into the divination. I got, because I pre-shuffle all of these before I hit the record button and the guides are like, slow and steady, kid. This is the only YouTube video I am making today because I got yard work to do. So uh, let's see what hits the table, both feet on the floor if you can. Focus on your breath, if you will, and I promise you, as a Virgo, Earth sign, Virgo sun sign, four planets, second house, uh, in Virgo, I will do everything within my power to help anyone do their shadow work, heal, release, surrender, to move to a more golden rather than leaded timeline for a happier, healthier, wealthier, wiser life and a happier, healthier, wealthier, wiser way for a happier, healthier, wealthier, wiser world, because as one of us heals, all of us heal. The upward spiral, there is no backsliding, believe it or not. I know it doesn't look it that way. So enough explanation, let's do the divination. Please take a nice deep breath. Ah, still point. Pantheonic override. A place for everything and everything in its place. Put all where it belongs in time and space, for the well-being of all and with harm to none, as we will it, so let it be done. Beloved pantheons of the divine, one card in clarity, please, from the Caroline Mace archetype cards representing the dominant archetype in the eighth chakra, acting like a satellite, sending down the codes to all the other chakras, shifting with the Capricorns and the Cross Watchers, attract and repel in their electromagnetic field, so they have the free will to no longer delay what cannot be prevented in their shadow work for this timeless shadow. Read the detective. Love it. You can have an archetype, a reason, a season, or a lifetime, or be dealing with somebody uh, for a reason, a season season or a lifetime because it is a uh, cross-watcher oriented reading as well. This is a wisdom family archetype. There are nine different families, categories, groups. Written on the card is the shadow attribute and the light attribute. I call this lead and this gold with those three metaphoric uh, atoms in between. Lead is heavier than gold uh, to do this. So look, I have the detective archetype for reasons. It pops up, right? And I think um, you can catch the vibe of this, the shadow attribute, voyeurism, falsifying information. It's Gladys Kravitz from Bewitched, if you really want to know the Snoop, the Spy, Abna, right? Only some of you will know what that means. Uh, the light attribute or the gold. Great powers of observation and intuition, desire to seek out the truth. And I know I have a strong detective archetype. I am so into Agatha Christie still for years and years and years. Hercule Poirot, Miss Marple, uh, Tommy and Tuppence, all of them. I love it. So this is one of my favorite archetypes. So it only comes in when I absolutely needed or for a reason. You should have seen me as a teenager, man. My parents couldn't hide shit. <laughs> I always found the stuff they didn't want me to find. Yeah, well, intuition is a thing. So, uh, let's get the next four chakras down with the Daughters of the Moon Tarot. Please take a nice deep breath. <sighs> Still point. My goddess is override. A place for everything and everything in its place. Put all where it belongs in time and space for the well-being of all and with harm to none as we will it, so let it be done. My beloved goddesses, please one card in clarity, heart third, third eye crown, internal, internal dynamic for the Capricorn Collective and their cross-watchers. What do they need to be aware of to assist them in alchemizing the detective in the eighth chakra for this timeless shadow read? Okay, you got a court card, Libra, okay? Uh, the mother of blades, which is like mother of swords. So Libra would be the king of swords, cardinal air, creative air. Now, if you have any planets in Libra, I do, I have my Venus in Libra, uh, then you might want to take that into consideration. Go have a look at your natal chart if you haven't checked out your chart. You can find so many free websites that are mostly accurate. Um, but certainly a court card on the inside, whether or not you are dealing with a Libra vibe, seventh house dynamic, 
is about um, re- relationships, one-on-one relationships, marriages, contracts, balance, and stuff like that. Cardinal Creative Air, and you are Capricorn Cardinal Creative Earth. So this can absolutely be about that, hmm, something is unbalanced here and I need to use uh, that detective power that you, I have within me, in this case that you have within you, to kind of follow the clues, the tips, the hints, right? Order and method, <laughs> Hercule Poirot. Uh, by the way, you can certainly look at your chart, like even if you don't have your natal chart, even if you don't have any planets in Libra, look at what house it's in depending upon your rising sign. It's helpful for me for sure all right lower three chakras outside in inside out let's see what that's about i'm rhyming please take a nice deep breath (sighs) still point my god's override a place for everything and everything in its place Put all where it belongs in time and space. Get in there. For the well-being of all and with harm to none. As we will it, so let it be done. My beloved gods, one card in clarity, please. Outside in, inside out, lower three chakras. Uh, uh, Relationships in the physical world. One card in clarity to assist the Capricorns. So what's going on in the physical world here to help them alchemize the detective in the eighth with uh, the mother of blades on the inner for this timeless read? All right, nine of wands. Nine of wands, a little fire element there for you. The entire suit of wands in the mythic tarot by Juliet Sharman Burke is dedicated to Jason and the Argonauts in the quest of the Golden Fleece. They've already got the fleece at this point. They didn't get fleeced, but they fleeced a dragon for it. It's a long story. It's a really good myth. A hero's journey, if ever there was one. This, they are almost home. But the, the Argo, that's why the Argo knots, right? They pilot the ship, the Argo, get stuck on a barrier or a reef, right? So they have to wait for this wave to come and push them through. And it doesn't go well, but they do get home and they are exhausted. <laughs> the Argo is broken up into pieces. So, you know, traditional Nine of Wands, if you're familiar with the Rider Waite Tarot, it's this guy. Did you touch my wands, right? All bandaged and beat up and whatnot. So this could be feeling a little bit stuck, but also not that far away from the goal. So certainly the Nine of Wands can be soft, divine, light of touch, speaky, little, listen, much, right? A boundary there, um, a bit of protective or defensive stance there while you suss out the truth of what's really going on here. But remember, it's not just about the mind. It's about the intuition. And intuition is visible. I would say certainly pay attention to your solar plexus with this one. Element of fire in the solar plexus, your honor code and your survival intuition right there in the solar plexus. It will always tell you when you're going to violate a boundary or your honor code or something along those lines. So this may not be terribly active right now. You might be on pause, sort of like, well, let's wait and see. My guides say to me a lot, they're like, kid, what do you want? Hot batter or cake? Let it bake, will ya? And <laughs> they're right, right? Patience is a virtue and Capricorns are really, really good at that. Virgos, not so much. We're mutable earth. We just want to get it done. So we have taken care of all of the chakras there from eight to root in those first three cards. Let's ask Lord Ganesh how to um, remove those obstacles for you. Please take a nice deep breath. (sighs) Ganesha over. for everything, and everything in its place, but all where it belongs in time and space, for the well-being of all with harm to none, as we will it, so let it be done. Beloved Lord Ganesh, one card in clarity, please, for the Capricorns and the Cross Watchers, what is your loving, wise, empowering uh, oracle message to assist them in alchemizing the detective in the eighth uh, Libra, uh, King of Swords, Mother of Blades on the inner that Libra vibe with the Nine of Wands for this timeless shadow read. 
Harmony, and it's the solar plexus. Is that solar plexus? No, that's sacrum, second chakra, that orange vibe I know by the crescent moon in the symbol I studied with the Ashaya monks a long, long time ago when I started the company for drawing the circle productions uh, and learned a lot from them and actually cultivated a rather strong relationship uh, with Lord Ganesh, because you got to admit, you know, elephants are definitely earth sign. So, harmony balance could be. Uh, you deserve to feel good about your existence. Now, I know a lot of Capricorns. You're sort of the Eeyores of the Zodiac, right? I love that, though. I <laughs> love sort of patch on the head. I love Capricorns so much. Well, I'm a Virgo. You know, it's an earth sign thing. So, to know that, you know, you deserve to feel good about just who you are without having to change anything. So, I'm going to read just a little bit of this. This card is symbolic of your personal beliefs and what will bring you happiness in your life. Ganesha is asking you to remember to radiate warmth and energy. Now that makes sense. Capricorns can be incredibly warm and tender once they feel safe and stable. Yeah? Take some time to reflect on your personal values and attitudes. What do you believe will bring you the outcomes you are longing for in order to have a complete and happy life? I'm going to read a little bit more. The orange color can refer to a period of socializing, activity, and new adventures. Orange is the color of the sacral chakra. I call it the sacrum. And is associated with the sexual sexual organs and reproductive systems. Mm. Uh, it can symbolize happiness and love. We store our feelings, emotions, pleasure, sensuality, intimacy, and connection in this domain. How deserving do you feel? When you feel that you deserve good, you treat yourself well and require that others treat you well also. Second chakra is one-on-one -on -one relationship like umbilical cord from navel to navel or sacrum to sacrum. When the sacral chakra is clear and the energy is in in balance, see, this is an inside job, most of this. You are friendly, compassionate, and empathic with a concern for others. You will experience a very strong sense of belonging. And everybody wants to belong. I think that's at the top of Maslow's Pyramid. Yeah, look it up. I'm not explaining that <laughs> in, this, in this five card draw. But yeah, the top of the period, I believe, is belonging. Everybody wants to belong. Don't we just? Yeah, we're all one, so eventually we'll figure that out. All right, last card down, Matcon, Healing Mantra. I would say with this element of air, creative air, cardinal air, a mantra would be helpful with this. Last card down. Please take a nice deep breath. <sighs> Still point. Ascended Master's Override. Hmm. A place for everything. And everything in its place. It all where it belongs in time and space for the well-being of all and with harm to none as we will it so let it be done beloved ascended master is one card in clarity please the perfect and precise healing mantra to assist the capricorn collective and their cross watchers to alchemize the gambler in the eighth libra on the inner nine of wands on the outer uh, removing obstacles uh, with harmony, particularly that second chakra thing, which can even answer yes or no questions and tell you if somebody's lying. Yeah, I'm really pretty skilled in that. After all, I'm a bird overruled by the intestines right in there. So, beloved Ascended Masters, what's the perfect healing mantra for this timeless shadow read? Growing beyond guilt. It couldn't have happened any other way. Look. All of us have psychic scar tissue, if you're of a certain age, like babies tend not to, but we all incarnate with stuff written in before we ever draw a breath, right? So there's something about growing beyond guilt. Now, certainly, this might be somebody else's guilt, right, that you are being the detector of, right? Feeling something's going on here and kind of going back and forth, back and forth, I would say element of air, definitely third eye and third chakra. So there is a choice to be made here, but you want to make it fair. But at the same time, there's, I wouldn't say it's a blockage, but I'd say that there is a defensive stance here. You may not be letting on what it is that you think or what you feel or what you know about this, but I will tell you, pay attention to that second chakra. It speaks in grunts when you ask it a yes or no question, and it does take a while to learn the language of your own second chakra. Everybody's nervous system is different. So for instance, do I like chocolate? Um, do I like snakes? 
No. <laughs> right? It's so instant, but I've been practicing that for decades now. Even trying to find things around the house. Is it in this room? Nope, nope. And sure enough, give me time. I'll go through every room in the house. So let me read this. Growing Beyond Guilt couldn't have happened any other way because it's written into the script. We don't remember signing the contracts, you see. We forget all of it, right? We, we, we go from 100% knowing all into 2% of knowing maybe I'll just how to, like, I don't know, poop our diapers. It's sort of inherent, right? So let me read this one. Growing Beyond Guilt is a really good one. Now, did anybody else get this? Let's see. Overcoming fear. Growing beyond guilt. Leo got this one. I had a feeling. My guys are so good. They just tapped me on the shoulder. So, uh, let me read this uh, for you. Growing beyond guilt. It couldn't have happened any other way. Right? It's like at the end of our Hercule Poirot and Agatha Christie, anything. It's like you see the whole picture and you go, it couldn't have happened any other way. When you grow beyond guilt, there is a heartfelt acceptance that any sequence of events unfolds in a perfect flow that is organized and expressed by the universe. In other words, we are not in control of that no matter how much we want to be. This takes the pressure of control off your shoulders so you can enjoy the way in which life has come to be. Now, that is a process. It is not a once and done. It's like brushing your teeth, right? Grow beyond guilt. Couldn't happen any other way. It alleviates the stress in the nervous system and releases the past very good for a shadow read. Um, uh, uh, since everything is destined to change and can only change you for the better, check out Matt Kahn's book, uh, The Universe Always Has a Plan. He goes in depth into that one. Uh, growing Beyond Guilt enables you to see how exquisitely the gift of life unfolds. But we usually see that in retrospect, right? Or my beloved Ascended Master Carrie Fisher, location, location, location. This mantra is ideal for releasing the past, unhooking from karmic patterns, and forgiving yourself. You know, we may very much want to forgive others but not be able to. The ego does not forgive. Only the soul does. But the personality is between the ego, yeah, screw them, and the soul, no, we're all one. And we're all love because you know the higher power does not judge unconditional love cannot judge so once we croak we find that out and then we're like oh damn it I could have left it on the dance floor let me play the game one more time so yeah whoever needs to be forgiven here I mean it certainly can make sense if you've had some tricky relationships where there were liar liar pants on fire going on and you know everybody lies because they're terrified right? <laughs> I'm not gonna say I have never lied but I don't lie anymore why because I want to leave it on the dance floor and go somewhere else after this life. Maybe a paradise planet, because that's where they tell me I'm, I've got a lot of incarnations on those. We'll see. Starseed. I'm, I'm a liar in Starseed, if you can't tell. <laughs> Meow. Okay, all the cards are on the table, and though I have no idea what's going to happen the moment I hit the record button here on the camera, I really have no idea for this next part, which is called a blessimation, a combination of the word blessing and summation. Let's see what comes out of my mouth, and really the prayer I do before I even hit record. I surrender this all to the divine so these general reads can be as clear as they can be. One more time, at least for this reading. Please take a nice deep breath. May we end as we began. Pantheonic override. I call upon the collective pantheons of the divine on behalf of the Capricorn Collective, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, Signs, and Cross Watchers, who are watching this video and drawn to this reading. May they be blessed with all that they need to alchemize their shadow to light, their lead to gold, their pain to peace, shifting them from toxicity to health, from fear to love, and from illusion to truth by growing beyond guilt, because it couldn't happen any other way. And therefore, finding some harmony within themselves, particularly that second chakra stuff, that creativity, that sensuality, because they do deserve? What keeps us from feeling like we don't deserve something? It's because of pain and shame and guilt from the past. And Course in Miracles says point blank. The past is over. It can touch me not, but the ego will use it at every turn that it can, particularly if they're feeling a little stuck, a little barred, maybe even a little bored, a little defensive about a particular situation, reason, season, or lifetime with that nine of wands. But they do have that lovely Libra 
balance inside of them that they, you know, throat chakra particularly, spit, swallow, or chew, they can chew on this uh, a little bit until all the pieces of the puzzle come together, particularly with the detective in the eighth chakra, with great powers of observation and intuition and a desire to seek out the truth. And who has a stronger desire to seek out the truth than one who has been gaslit or lied to or fibbed at? So may they be blessed with all that they need to heal, to grow, to learn, to evolve, to alchemize their shadow to light, lead to gold, pain to peace, shifting them from toxicity to health and from fear to love for a happier, healthier, wealthier, wiser life in a happier, healthier, wealthier, wiser way for a happier, healthier, wealthier, wiser world in the golden true love timeline for the well-being of all and with harm to none as we will it. So let it be done. So let it be. And so it is. It's pretty good. Definitely has its shadow elements here. Guilt. Of course, in Miracle says, the child of God cannot sin in a dream. <laughs> How's that? Oh, I do love me some Course in Miracles and absolutely check it out. But if you're going to do the big blue book, make sure it's from the Foundation for Inner Peace. The Foundation for Inner Peace. They are the original publishers. Marianne Williamson, Gary Renard, all of Raymond Moody, all these people have been teaching it. But it was a real uh, life changer for me because I am a pure non-dualist, which there's only one of us here, darling. So it's one of us heals, all of us heals. So have at it. If you found this reading helpful, please hit the like button. It will help other Capricorns and cross watchers grow beyond guilt and who can't use that, right? It's a journey, but it's a journey worth taking. Slow and steady wins the race. If you want more of me here on YouTube, please subscribe because I do this for kicks. I like doing general reads, but one-on-one -on -one readings is really my specialty. So uh, yeah, follow along. We're having a field day here and I say me, my cats, and my gods and all of that. If you want the deeper dive, come play Patreon on Patreon. I love doing the daily check-ins. They're so much fun. A cup of coffee, right? My cat's doing acrobatics in the background. It's great fun. Uh, chatting about the day's astrological weather and all of that. Uh, they also get all the extended readings, the part twos to the part ones. And like I said, all of my extended readings are soulmates, twin flames, true loves, all that kind of stuff. Uh, but certainly they get that significant discount as well. You can follow along for free on Patreon. You can seven day free trial, dip a toe. If you don't like it, leave, or you can follow for free or choose uh, one of the other levels of subscription. It's just the coolest thing I've ever done. I've worked really, really hard. I've been reading tarot since I'm 12 years old. I'm now 55. Yeah, I know, I don't look at things. Thank you, St. Retinol and the Rapid Wrinkle Repairing. And uh, yeah, it's just so cool. Check it out, click the link. Go, go watch some of the free previews and listen to some of the free previews for the audios, dude. They're lovely. Yeah. Come Patreon on Patreon with the Archangel of Lions, Mark Angela Lions. But you can still just call me Mal. And if you would like to book me for a private session, I did make a video last year for the 25th anniversary of Drawing the Circle Productions when I was living in Holbrook, Long Island, New York. I didn't know I would be moving to Saratoga Springs as quickly as I did. I knew it was going to happen eventually, but it happened really, really fast, so I have to make a new one. But the video that I did make, and you can find it very easily in the description box, is called Booking Private Sessions with Mal. Basically explains everything you need to know about booking me for a private session, what I charge, why I charge it, my ethics, right, the Patreon discount. But but now I have an office downstairs in my beautiful home in Saratoga Springs, so I am taking clients, but I need to know the client. Like, for example, are you allergic to cats? Do you really want to carry an EpiPen right, to, to a reading? I'm also doing readings at the Magic Moon in Saratoga Springs on Fila Street, three days a week. But they tell me when somebody books, I prepare myself, I bring the cards, I read them, and then I come home. That's how it works. The majority of the readings and the spiritual counselings that I do, however, are on video, but I do it with a Zoom recording. So uh, right before the client uh, starts, I send them my Zoom link, they come in, we record the whole thing so they don't have to memorize, they don't have to take notes, it's a conversation, they see every card hit the table spontaneously as it happens. At the end of the session, I send them a link so they can download it to their devices. They then tell me they downloaded it to their devices and then I delete it from the cloud because ethics is so important to me in this work. There are a lot of readers out there that I don't know what they're thinking, but they're not thinking right. No, no, no. Confidentiality is key for this kind of work, particularly spiritual counseling. And that's why the client keeps the video read of it because they can do whatever they want with it, but I will never share that stuff. Lockbox, baby, big time. 
And uh, what else is there? Oh yeah, the most important thing, here's an ethic, the most important thing I say in that video, and I will say it in the, ne the next one that I make, I think I'm gonna call it Booking Mal, because I try and change the title every time. Uh, I've never turned anybody away because of lack of finances. I've been down on the balls of my ass, of course I have, and a lot of people have reached out to help me throughout my very, very long career as a professional witch and a professional intuitive. So, where there's a witch, there's a way. I am a witch and a very t well trained one. So, we always make a way, even if we agree for the client to pay it forward to someone else down the line when they can. As long as we agree upon it, it's fine. Because I am here to serve, and I'm a lot of fun, and I'm wicked fucking accurate with what I do, though I do curse like a sailor. You should meet my family. So yeah, click the link, check it out. My mom loves the video. So I will keep it up even after the new one is made. Because I'm the president and I get to do that kind of stuff. And thank you so much for watching. I know, a total shadow raid, but really that balance, that Libra on the inside, really important. Growing beyond guilt is so important because those are chains of smoke. They look real, but they're not. We just have to move past them. But of course, the miracles also say is all it takes is a small willingness to forgive. And then you consistently make those small willingness and you set yourself free. It's the best way to alchemize anything is to understand it couldn't have happened any other way. It's written into the script. We are just playing and strutting our hour upon the stage. William Shakespeare dated him. So thank you so much for watching. I love me some Capricorns. And just remember, I'm here for you if you need the help. I believe in you. You've got this. Heal. Hail. Farewell. And blessed, blessed be.